So you are the chairman of Leverhead, yeah. yeah? What has been one of your highlights as a chairman of Leverhead? <laughs> can you tell, if anyone that doesn't know, can you tell the story about that? Yeah, we pulled uh, Billy Ricky last year in the first round of the FA Cup. We played him at home, we drew him one off. And then we went to their place on a Thursday night, got screened live on BT Spot. And everyone fancied, obviously, them to win. I think we were 17, 18 to one. And we went over there and won three months. You've got a Japanese international in your, your team. How the heck did that happen? Yeah, that happened. My business partner's friends with the Japanese Federation, and we got put in touch with Robbie Cullen's agent. And then he then decided he came down, he liked it, and he ended up signing for us. So, yeah, Japanese international, um, played a few games this year. Today he's on the bench. It certainly brings a lot of quality to the, to the team. Yeah, and what's it like being a chairman? For anyone that doesn't know... Yeah, he's, he's, there's a lot of... He's, running a football club's tough at any level, and, and certainly a non-league level, you've got a lot of stuff going on and a lot of things fall on your shoulders, so you end up doing a lot of stuff from, uh, you know, from making sure that the facilities are in the right order, that you're, you're renting out the function room, to sorting out, making sure the football team's going well, to making sure the staff, the volunteers, the fans, and it's, 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 it's a difficult role, but it's one that's also enjoyable when, when you get the right results. And what, as a chairman, what do you set yourself targets every year uh, for the team? You know, and what's your long-term target? Maybe not this season. What's your long-term target as a chairman? Yeah, we do. And the, the key thing in terms of from the chairman is the club infrastructure. So we're looking at improving the ground. That's a massive thing for us. So we just spent, I think it was 28 grand on changing rooms, and now we're looking at moving the boardroom. And then we're looking at doing floodlights and stands, and, and, uh, and that, that's that's our key thing. And on the football pitch, we think we've got the right people in charge and the right players to to get the results that we that we require. And we're in the full qualifying round of the FA Cup next week. We go to Hitchin away, um, so we hope to get a result there and hopefully be back in the first round of the FA Cup. That's certainly be the aim. And uh, final on a final note, um, this is a, a non-league day. What does, for anyone that's not a non-league fan, what does a non-league mean to you? I think the non-league, the difference between non-league, and I've got friends and, and I've got a brother that supports Liverpool and season to go, is, is the difference between non-league is that you actually make a difference, you are part of the club, you feel community, so I know the fans, I know, I know them by name, the, the players integrate with the, with the supporters, you actually make a difference. When you pay your £10 on the gate, it goes towards helping the club continue. So I'd say that's the big difference, whereas in the Premier League, we all know that that's all about big business and, and the TV and Sky and etc. That's what makes the money for them. So supporters are kind of, and a lot of them, we've had a lot of supporters come from Premier and the Championship where they're like, well actually we know that the players care and we might actually make a difference. So, and, and, and they do, because at this level without the supporters then you, have, you haven't got anything anyway. Coaches, get your line wet. Oh, oh. Ready, it's a big kick, mate. Oh, oh. Yeah. Straight and narrow. Keep going, Lewis. Keep going, then. Keep going. Stay. Where are you, Stay. Oh, red. Hang on, your son is number 10? Yeah, but he's a Beckham's Richards. Yeah? Yeah. Tell me about your son as a footballer. Well, he had a scholarship at Old Shop. Um, two years, which he enjoyed very much. But he started off with PPR. He had a year with Raheem Sterling. They were playing together for a year. <laughs> and um, he was second score behind Raheem Sterling. And he played, played him in the back. He played him right back. And Can he call up Raheem Sterling and say, get me a trial at Man City? He could, he knows it. You know, it's about luck, isn't it? What's it like watching your son play football? Um, when you know they're good, you know, not, I shouldn't really say they're good, when you know they're, they're very talented, it's, you're thinking that he could get to a higher standard because he's actually skillful, he's quick, very quick. And he, first season here, he was a top scorer. And they start, then the second season, he's still top scorer, but they start playing him in the wing. He's joined top scorer in the second season. He can score the goals, he can score from any position. He can score from the wing, he can score from anywhere. What's the name to look out for? He's Beckers Richards. Tony! Tony! What have I said? What the f***ing ball he's bowling down on the penny spot? I've just told you! Go on with the second ball. <laughs> <laughs>
Nothing like giving it straight to the cheap bone and everything. For me, this is closer to the level that I used to play, so I love watching it. Um, it's really, it is a great community. It's just a great day out. My kids can come up, have a kick about while the game's on. So a, a few kids um, having a kick about, and we just really enjoy the day out. And it's being so close to the pitch actually is what we really enjoy. You're training with Wingate, right? Yeah, I'm training with Wingate. Um, but education is an important part of yes. your, your life. Yes, it is. Um, I, was, I was currently studying molecular biology at university. Um, but yeah, at the same time, I'm playing football and I still have aspirations to be a professional footballer. Um, I'm 20 years old of age. Um, I've also I played pro abroad in Sweden, in Norway. I was at Norway with FK Fredrikstad and I was also at um, Fitzler Bielefeld in Germany, which is League 3 in Germany. So I've been with the gift and the gaff around professional football. I got offered a pro contract in Cyprus as well at the same time. Being from an African background, it's more a lot of the time the parents want you to be just educational based. Everyone does football, so it's more of a thing where football's not going to get you anywhere. Just stick to education, so it's been quite hard for me, especially I'd I, I say I started to get into the, the non league, the pro background of football quite late at a late age. I've never been into an academy, football. I've had a trial, but I've never been played academy football. And you went abroad yourself, can you talk about that? I took myself, I took myself abroad. I remember I, I caught a flight and I was like, I just went to see a friend in Norway. I done my research that there was a pro club there, so I was like, you know what, let me just do it. And I took myself to the club, I said, I want to train. The first time he done, he said, nope, I went again and I said, I want to train. He said, what's the name of the Let me speak to the United coach. I I trained with them, so I trained them for a month or so. And then my career, football is based on opinions. One coach might like you, one coach has come to me saying, you're not good enough, you're not good enough for the squad. I don't think you're going to make it professional football or even play it, even make it in the reserve team at non league. Whereas I've gone to another club and then now I'm starting 11, keep pushing within six months, you're going to make it. So for me, it's been a thing where your mentality has to be key because. You, it's like it's like you're on a, a rocky boat and this rocky boat turns left it goes right sometimes it just goes straight there's one with Slough Town I played against Slough Town for a window or no for a dashboard time and I remember I was having a good game everything was going well so I, I must have done a, a perfect run I ducked the keeper and then I was on goal and I missed the goal I missed the open goal in front of at least a thousand people a thousand five hundred and I say that was probably one of the worst highlights of my footballing career. And for me, that that for that day, it beat me down. But now I know that I'll never make that mistake again. For me, to be successful in football is never let your fear decide your future. Always be positive, never negative.
this your usual uh, warm down? For me, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Ice bath. Uh, it depends. In my last club, the, in my last club, it will depend on where it was. Um, if we're at home, normally, normally, sometimes it's in the changing room, but normally it's out here at this ground anyway. But yeah, mm. I mean, normally it's down to each player. You got sent off and you came off and said, "Can you explain what happened?" Yeah. So basically, what happened was having an altercation with the ref. I said a bad word, which was a yellow card. And then, because I didn't apologise, he said, OK, straight red, which is silly. I just think it's perfect. So. Might appeal, might not. It just depends on what the chairman says. We'll see. All right, cool. See that, ref. The ref just shook your hands. Yeah. <laughs> How was the ref today? How was no, he's, no, he's all right. No, he's all right. No, he's all right. He's all right. He's quite strict, as obviously you see with um, send, the sending off. He's quite strict, but he's normally fair with it. Like, you know, certain refs, when you get on, if you get on to them, they'll talk to them a bit. They start trying to throw the decisions the other way, but he's normally fair with it. If he sees it, if he thinks it is a foul, it's a foul. And if not, it's not. I, do, I just, just love every batter, really. Just, I can go and, it's not even just this level. Like, I could just play anywhere. I can go and play in the park and I just enjoy enjoy the football. It's just really, I just want to play football anywhere, kick a ball anywhere around. It's just I enjoy it anywhere, really. Like when you played international football front team for the first time. It was good, it was just like, it was a different action, especially because of the way it was as in, we had to come back and win, like we was like, I think three one down or four one down at the time. So we had to um, put on a big performance to come back and win. So obviously the game meant a lot, it won the World Cup qualifiers. Who were you playing against in the World um, Cup? St. Lucia. Wow. Yeah. So it was, it was different atmosphere, and then we had a we had a few other ones where where I travelled to Guatemala. That was a that was a weird one there. But nice, enjoyable as well. Just getting out to different countries, playing football, different lifestyles, and everything. It's good. Okay, so you are from Ibaraki. Yeah. You played Japanese national football. Yeah. Yeah. Um, who did you play with? What kind of players? I play with. I'm a Zen generation of uh, Beijing Olympics, so I played with Keisuke Honda, Nagatomo, Uchi, Uchida from Schalke, former player, uh, yeah, some famous player in Japan. So can you talk about your football career? So you played in the Japanese J League, yeah. and then you decided to go abroad. Why did you decide to go abroad? Um, my dream is playing in England as a professional footballer. I tried to play England after the L Divish, the Holland League, but I couldn't make it. Um, but I, I was searching every year after every year, and finally I'm here. It's, it's lower division, but it's a great experience. And different football, and di different culture, and different language, and different people. Yeah. Um, I think that makes my personality high level. You made it high level. How did you do it? Just every day try to work hard and do what you have to do. And don't don't I say drink a lot alcohol. <laughs> try to join the higher league and higher clubs and they're gonna make you professional something like that you have to be and play in the good club and you have to choose it and so and you have to get the good information from I don't know the laptops or something we can have uh, information in everywhere now so did you do that when you went abroad did you find out information about club uh, or something or not yourself yeah 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 As, yeah. The professional. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. The agent gave me an offer and I check it. And if I interest it, I go and play. And I chose Thailand because the economy was really high at that time. And, and India also. The Indian Super League is, I think, the, the one of the richest league in Asia. That was a great experience as well. And in Korea, also, I say it's our neighbor, so I wanted to see the country. And it was a nice country. 
Okay, so we are one of the wonderful non-league football clubs. We have got the most amazing people behind the scenes. We do things the right way. We put money into the facilities, into the pit. You know, one groundsman of the year last year. Um, we're not here to, you know, just give mercenary players money just to rise up the leagues. That's not what we're about. We're about getting people from the community, players from the local area, making them the best that they can be. Um, be finishing as high up in the league that we can, playing attractive football and hoping that some players progress to higher levels. You've just uh, had your first game in management. How do you feel, Nicky? Um, what's the right word? <laughs> Relieved. That it's uh, the first time's all out of the way, so next time it won't be the first time, and you know you get a lot with it being that sort of first time, and a lot extra that comes with it. And now at least we can try and concentrate just on the players and the football. So. And why did you decide to become a manager? Um, just felt like a bit of a natural progression. Um, I was a first team coach, and then I was going down that way, and I kind of thought, well. It's sort of, you're either going to do it or you're not. You keep talking about maybe doing it, shall I do it? And I thought, well, this opportunity come up and good, well-run club, good pitch. Um, give it a go and see how we get on. Um, you were not the tallest fullback, and now full fullbacks are pretty tall. Well, do you think smaller fullbacks can make it in this day and age in football? Yes, <laughs> I do. Well, I was 5'9", that's not too small, is it? It's not. No, I do. I think um, it depends how. Um, I'm, I'm looking at as a manager. Yeah, yeah. No, no. Of course they can. Um, it just the, the the biggest thing for someone who's small is um, if they've got a football brain, if they know what they're doing, if they can use their body well uh, in different circumstances. And of course they can. Um, just depends on the player, basically. Yeah, because a lot of these players I was talking to, some of them are training with you, some of them, you know, are fringe players. They want to make it a higher level, yeah. And do you think, do you have your own mindset of players you might want to bring in, and you know who you see as? Pro do you think it could be a Jamie Vardy from here? Uh, why not? Um, absolutely. Uh, that's what that's what we're all searching for to try and improve players, um, try and find that gem out of nowhere in the lower leagues. Um, I, I just want to try and help players and try and help them improve. Um, and of course, yeah, that's that's the dream, isn't it? And I want people to dream like that who, who are going to play for me because then they'll give you everything and they'll try their best. This is going on YouTube, so in five years' time, where would you like to be, Nicky? Well... If you could look back on this, if you had to say some things you'd like to achieve. Oh, listen, of course you want to... You want to be managing as, as high as you can, where that be, who knows, or, you know, it's hard to, look. I don't like looking too far in the future. I like to be in the here and now and give my best for whatever I'm doing at that, that moment in time and then wherever it takes you is wherever it takes you. Yeah, and what were your, do you have any memories from Fulham when you were at Fulham? Yes, loved it. Great club. Uh, really enjoyed it. We'd like to have stayed there longer than just on a loan, but never happened. Um, only fond memories. I went back there to play for was it West Brom. Uh, I was sub, come on, and I got a great, great um, applause from the crowd. And they're, they're really good, really good fans. And I was there. I was lucky. I was there when they went to the final of the UEFA Cup. Uh, unfortunately for me, I was cup tied because I played for Aston Villa. So I kind of played in the league, and then Paul Kuczewski, who was injured at the time, then come back, and then he played in the UEFA Cup and. Yeah, missed out on that, but there you go. Yeah, and what would you be your advice? Because you made it as a footballer, 90 something percent don't make it. Mm. What would you be your advice to some youngster watching this that wants to make it as a footballer? Work hard. That's, that's it. Work hard. I mean, if you don't want to work hard, then don't even think about it, because talent is only going to get you so far. If you don't want to work hard and put in the hours, forget it.